All right, let's see if it lasts this longer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Just Facebook loves to distort the whole thing. But anyway, here we go. So the word of the Lord came to me saying, the Pharisees were lovers of money. I don't, um, I don't remember if we stumbled upon it or if we were reading through it or if we, it was the end of a verse that we were. I don't know. I don't remember if it was, um, it was him giving me in the spirit. I had, all I know is the word that he's been impressing on my heart. And he said, make a connection. I want you to tell the people and make a connection with what's happening now. So, Father Spirit, you have your way? You're the voice, I'm the mic. So I heard alert saying that the Pharisees, gosh, there's hair everywhere. What the? Okay. So I heard alert saying that the Pharisees will love us of money. All right, I heard you saying there's the Pharisees were lovers of money. The far you see, the far you see, they believe as far as they can see. Well, literally, that was their thinking. Um, they were the ones in society that would be with the elders and the chief priests and all of them, Sadducees and the the, the Sanhedrin, whatever, whoever they were, all these bodies of people that made up society, that controlled the masses that controlled the people the pharisee the pharisees i was going to say the far you see you heard me um the pharisees they, they that was always plotting against jesus they were always they were always with the bunch trying to catch him in something or trying to twist his words against him or looking for trouble Let's read what the Bible says about the Pharisees and the lovers of money. Come with Alright, so they seem to not like that face, love of money. Alright, so we're going to go to the book of Luke 16 and take it up in verse 13 because we're looking at verse 14. And it says, No servant can serve two masters, for he will either hate one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other you cannot serve god and mammon the bible tells us that abba said abba jesus abba father god creator of heaven and earth god said that he's at enmity with the world he's at enmity with the systems of the world he hates the world's systems why because it it forces the people to go against his way it forces the people to go against his holiness. It forces the people to go against his direction, his counsel, his love. The world and the systems of the world force the people to uh, rebel against God, to gain it. So the Bible tells us that God is at enmity with the world systems. He's at enmity with the world. And when we say the world, that's exactly what we mean. The world's systems. All right? Oh, there. So then the Bible comes in. It says, "A friend of this world renders himself an enemy to God." How can you be a friend of the world and an enemy to God? Well, that doesn't make sense. Yeah, it does. He who is a friend of this world's systems is an enemy, or renders himself automatically qualifying to be. All right, so. He who is a friend of this world renders himself an enemy to God. So if you decide to go with the world systems, then you're obviously not going to be in holiness, you're not going to be in goodness, you're not going to be in obedience, you're not going to be in the word of God, you're not going to be in the spirit of God, you're not going to be born again of the spirit, because you are rendering yourself an enemy to God. You have chosen one side. The Bible tells us that he who is an enemy of God is a friend of this world. He is a friend of this world is an enemy to God. Same thing he said. Now, the Bible comes in and tells us plain as D. It says, you will love one and despise the other. To despise the other, to well, we know what love is, you know, hmm, go into obsession with it, passion, passionate, compassionate, and to... to Deep despise. Despise is the total opposite. It means to hate with your whole being. Hatred. So, he who is a friend of this world hates God. 
hates the ways of God, hates the spirit of God, hates the word of God. He who is a friend of this world renders himself. You know, it's like you're automatically qualified. Renders himself an enemy to God. All right. So let's read on in Luke uh, in Luke 16. Here we go. Take it on verse uh, 13 again. No servant can serve two masters. Why? Because you're going to love one and hate the other. It says, For he will either hate one and love the other, or else he will be loyal. When you're loyal to something, what are you? You're dedicated to it. You are committed to it. You are giving your whole self to it. It is your first. It is your first priority. It is your. You are loyal. Whatever it takes. And the Bible used the word loyal. It says, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. So the opposite of giving self to one or giving, um, committed to or. Uh, loyal, uh, loyal, <laughs> or uh, faithful to, or uh, you know when you're loyal, you're in moving. You're you're there. You're rooted. You've made a decision. You're there. You're loyal. The Bible tells us that you be loyal to one, but you're going to despise the other. In this case. It's God and the world. Those are the two choices. It says, well, he else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. Look what else it says. You cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon is what? Mammon. Mammon is a demon. It's a demon uh, of money. It's a demon of love of money. It's the overflowing of self to money. It's the overtaking of self to power through money. Mammon. Now look at verse 14. It says you cannot serve God and mammon, right? Verse 14. Now the Pharisees who were lovers of money. So the word derided or derided, D E R I D E, means to express contempt for ridicule. What does that mean? They are they are literally ticked off. They are they are coming at him with you know when a debater comes on. All right, that's better. A debater, debaters, you know somebody who, who just they won't accept whatever the truth. They won't accept the truth, and they just come on to debate, to to mess it up, to try and pull it down, but they can't. Look what it says. It says, now the Pharisees who were lovers of money also heard all these things and they derided him. Verse 15. He said to them, uh -huh. what do you say? You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your heart. Mm -hmm. For what is highly esteemed amongst men is an abomination in the sight of God so they they're looking to hold him in they're looking to to pull him down they're looking to prove that he is wrong so that's when they come with all the outer time in statements and all the you know uh, why why you could serve God and mammon then and both so that's where all the all the philosophies come in and all the history come in and they, they will go through, you know, they will look for something that could back up their case. But this is Jesus they're against. This is the, actually the word of God that they're talking to. All right, look what it says. Now the Pharisees who were lovers of money also heard all these things and they derided him. And he said to them, you are those who justify yourselves before men. That's like a debate, right? You know, when you say things in the favor of what people would like, for example, um, homosexuality, you know, if you're, in a, um, if you're in a discussion or a debate with uh, a person of homosexuality who is for homosexuality, they will, they will try to say all the things that would appeal to the homosexuals that they, they would literally... 
gang up against you. All right, now we're getting somewhere. So, it says, He said to them, Jesus speaking, You are those who justify yourselves before men. But God knows your hearts. For what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. So, that's a really good example with the homosexuality. Um, it's an abomination in the sight of God. Like it, limp it to love it. You could put love in there. You could say, you know, equality. And you could put this and that and people choices and this and that. And you could put in a whole bunch of things. Like whatever you want to put in there. But the fact remains, it's an abomination. So the Pharisees, the Pharisees, were the ones that loved tangible things. They loved materialism. They loved the things that you could see and feel and touch and smell and taste and hear. And if they were in the Garden of Eden, they would be the first one to grab the fruit of the tree that God said not to eat. All right, so the Pharisees were, were the ones that opposed Jesus, especially when it came to the systems of this world and the money that runs it. You know, mammon, the demon. The demon uh, of the world systems. So, I heard I was saying, talk about the Pharisees being the lovers of money now. Because they were lovers of money and they were hating that. Lovers of money, haters of Jesus. What was Jesus doing? Jesus was preaching the kingdom of heaven has come to the earth. Because he was about to be sacrificed, he was about to be crucified. And he would give us the kingdom in the spirit because the sacrifice was done. But the they were the ones who sit in high chairs and high places and have high stature and all the, the materialism of the world. They towered over the people by ensla yes, Father, I hear you. enslaving their minds in the system, a system that was created. What we know as the Babylonian system, what we know as the pyramid scheme, what we know, you know, only those... It. Everybody else at the bottom is trampled under. All right. So the Pharisees were lovers of money. And what was God saying again about uh, loving money? What did he say again? Do not. I hear him saying Hebrews 13, 5. He says, do not be lovers of money. But. Some have strayed from the faith through it, right? Let's read Hebrews 13, 5 and see what it says. So you want us to read Hebrews 13. Five. Ouch. All right, take it up in verse 4. Marriage is honorable among all, and the bed undefiled. But fornicators and adulterers, God will judge. Verse 5. Let your conduct be without covetousness. What is covetousness? Be content with such things. When you covet in something, you want what they have. You want what you see. You, 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 you're jealous of it. You want it for yourself and you will do whatever it takes to get it because jealousy comes all kinds of evil okay um let your conduct be without covetousness be content with the things with such things as you have for he himself has said who who's speaking god i will never leave you nor forsake you verse six we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can man do to me? All right, hold on there. Do not be lovers of money. I hear him saying that, so we're going to find that. So, I heard him say Timothy, but I don't know where. So, uh, do not be lovers of money. Second Timothy 3, 2. 2 Timothy. All right. So we're going to read 2 Timothy 3 2. 
Mm, yeah, my hair is just lovely in my face, isn't it? Second Timothy 3 2. Take it up in verse 1. But know this that in the last days, where are we? In the last days, perilous times will come. For men, what does perilous mean? Evil, wicked times. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud. All right, so we're reading. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient, thankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong. When you're headstrong, you might meet up and nobody moving you, you know? Headstrong. Cease. All right. So, where am I? Haughty. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Having a form of godliness but denying its power. That's what Jesus said. They say, Lord, Lord. They say, Lord, Lord. They profess Him with their mouths, but their heart is far from them. Their heart is on the world. So they say, Lord, Lord professing themselves to be wise they became fools right the Bible says having a form of godliness but denying its power from such people turn away so he makes that very clear and says lovers of money is the spirit of the Pharisees it's the spirit that hated Jesus remember love one hate the other and who was it is that who who it was that made sure that Jesus was persecuted and brought him before the chief priests and the elders and so who oh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees right so these are the same people they rejected his preaching they rejected his love they rejected him bringing uh equality to humanity through godliness and holiness they rejected it and what did they shout crucify him and what did they shout release who barabbas who was a murderer all right so it goes to show that the spirit of the pharisees is the spirit of the love of money which is mammon and they were so adamant in their ways that they chose a murderer over God. And if you're in a level where you know him as a son, son of God. And if you're in a level where you know him as savior, savior, which is son of God. So I heard him say, the Pharisees were lovers of money. And this is very important because 2 Timothy 3 verse 1 to 5 tells us exactly what we're going to face in these days. Because people, we are in the last days and you don't need to see a volcano erupt or an earthquake happen. Or you don't need to see a hurricane mash down something or, or a country in recession or, or food missing from the planet or this one dying and that. But you, you don't need to see pandemics and pestilences to understand that it's the last days. Look around and you will see the hearts of people growing cold and the love for things of the world becoming prevalent. They deny the glory of God to obtain these things. I heard Abba say, talk to them about it. So, the spirit of the Pharisees is likened unto Mammon, the demon, which is the, the, love, the, the love of money. Money answers all things. It makes life easier. Yes, we know that. But there comes a, 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 a barrier, a boundary, if you will. When in surplus amounts, it's not going towards the kingdom of heaven. It's going towards self and gratification of self 